Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson, and it's fabulous Friday. Come on, somebody. This is a new day, the day that the Lord has made. He tells us we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm rejoicing, y'all. I'm rejoicing. I am rejoicing because what God is doing in my life, he is a healer and a deliverer. Come on, somebody. He answered prayers. He's a mighty God, an awesome Father. I praise God. I don't know where y'all at. It's 6.30, y'all. What's up? Wake up. Wake up. I know y'all say, I don't know what time Pastor Rob going to be on, but I'm coming. You know I'm going to be on. So I'm going to start this off with a good prayer, and we're going to get into the Ramble Word for this fabulous Friday. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for another opportunity to live life on this earth. God, I thank you for your your, your mighty hand, God, how it just heals and delivers and set free. Oh, God, I pray that uh, we know who the Redeemer are. God, we can cast our cares upon you. God, I thank you, Father, for the word this morning. I thank you for those who are tuning in this afternoon and, of course, this evening. May they all, God, may we all feel a sense of love because what you have to say to us. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. The God's people say amen. All right. All right, y'all on. I see your sister Pam, Elder Brooks. Yeah, yeah, man. This is, I'm feeling better, y'all. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Slow, just a slow process, but it's a good process. It's a good process. So, you know, uh, keep praying for me, please. Uh, this this brace here is, uh, I tell you what, sometimes it can get very uncomfortable. But nevertheless, it's, it's working on the inside. Come on, somebody. So, that being said, let's get into our study series for this fabulous Friday, Embracing Your True Identity in Christ. Embracing Your True Identity in Christ. And, and what we're saying is we're going to welcome who we are in Christ. We're going to welcome that. Yeah, we're going to accept that we will call from the darkness to the wonderful light. We're going to take up. Come on, somebody, who we are in Christ, knowing to whom we was called to. So, brothers and sisters, the word I'm going to give you today that's going to bless you, is going to challenge you. And oftentimes I've heard people use this random word out of context. But because we are privileged and we've been given, come on, somebody, uh, uh, opportunity to be a friend of Jesus. And we have accepted the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we're blessed, but there are some things I think we have to overcome to, to fulfill what I believe that God wants us to fulfill. Now, that being said, I want you to really hone in on this something. I want you to think about this. Is there anybody, anybody on the face of this earth or any situation that you have encountered that you have not forgiven whoever for that situation? or the experience. Have somebody hurt you enough where you just feel like, I just, I, I, won't, I won't forgive them. I can't forgive them. See, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Because of your true identity in Christ Jesus, we got to even lean into forgiveness. Yeah, at a different level, right? We can't just be walking around saying I'm privileged, I got it going on, and everything is perfect in my life. Not so much perfect, but I receive all the other blessings. But what I'm told to do is to forgive. That's a conversation I'm willing not to have. Well, listen, because we're going to embrace our true identity in Christ, we need to know if there's unforgiveness in our, in our life, we need to deal with that. Yeah, we need to deal with that because that's a vertical thing. It's uh, vertically, then, you know what, it finished horizontally. It's important. Let's get in the Roman Word. Let the Roman Word talk to us. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, Jesus said these words, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, I, I, listen, brothers and sisters, I don't know how many times I've been in a church or, or heard a pastor or a teacher teach this and they talk about giving financially. That's not what this, this, this uh, verse is about. No. 
I've heard people use. I've never used it in that context because I understand what this verse is about. You probably heard people say give. And if you give, you know, it'd be given to you in tithes and offerings. A good measure. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. No, it's not what this is about. No. What this passage is about, hey, Jesus talking about, hey, those who are going to follow him, we must do what? Forgive our enemies. That's what this passage is talking about. Those adversaries, those opposers, we to, we to forgive them. And this choice must be influenced by understanding your identity in Christ. See, if you know who you are and to whom you belong to, you know that this passage is telling us something that is so profound that we got to dig into. We may not like the way people talk to us. We may like, not like the way people treat us, but the Bible says forgive them. Forgive. I can't tell you how many situations I've encountered being on the west side, been going through Oak Brook, going to uh, Oak Park, and some of the prejudice stuff I've encountered. Forgive, son. That's right. See, here's the deal, brothers and sisters. The reason why we are called to forgive, because forgiveness is something that we had already received. Okay, we've been pardoned ourselves. Okay, hey man, if, if we, the body of Christ, who are in Christ, if God decide, because he could, not to be merciful, knowing that we have sin, and we do sin, come on somebody, then, hey, guess what? Hey, he can treat us as our sin deserves. How many times have you prayed yourself? Hey, Father, please don't treat me as my sin deserves. That's the truth. I can't tell you, I pray that all the time because I know if he took his gracious hand up off of us, where will we be, brothers and sisters? Okay, hey, hey, God don't want us to judge people or condemn people. He wants us to love people, okay? He wants us to love them without, you know, things being, uh, uh, in other words, you know, don't love just the lovable, love the unlovable. Right. Give. So think about that passage again. Just Let's just think about it for a moment. Give and it will be given to you. Okay. A good measure. So in other words, how you measure your forgiveness should be given back unto you. Think about it for a moment. Is there somebody you have not forgiven? Is there a situation you have not forgiven? Do you think that we're going to get away with unforgiveness and be all right in Christ? Brothers and sisters, it says, for with, the, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back unto you. So the truth of the matter is, I really don't want to be measured. You know, the measure I use, man, we'd be jacked up, wouldn't we? See, because we know we all fall short. And this is the type kind of passage that will bring reconciliation to broken families, to broken relationships. There are sibling rivalries today because the body of Christ won't hold on to this chapter here. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. There are Christians, man, that have wrote off their family members because they have hurt them some type of way. Brothers and sisters, we have to really look at because our, in our true identity, there cannot be unforgiveness in our identity in Christ because it's impossible to really be a child of God. We cannot have unforgiveness. We must forgive. So I want to ask you this question on this fabulous Friday. Are you ready to release your faith knowing that you are called to embrace your true identity in Christ. Here's how we do it. In Luke 6, 37 says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So what does that look like? Let me, let, let's, let's just go through this right quick together. Okay, so how do that look today? Okay, number one, I think is it'll help us to be merciful, okay? Take this merciful stance. How do I be merciful? Well, one way we could be patient with people quirks. Just be patient. Man, I, man, listen, man, we all have our quirks. We all have our way. Come on now. We, we have to be patient with other people. Come on. You know, let's, let's help anyone, you know, that we know they're hurting. If we got hurting siblings and hurting family members, let's walk with them. Okay? Man, do you know 
when we merciful, we also give people opportunity. Give them a second chance. No, pastor, I done gave them 15 chances. Well, what does the Bible talk about forgiveness? It talk about that. We, we have to forgive, right? Hey, listen, you know one way we could be merciful too? Look to do good to those who hurt us. That's a different level, right? But that'll bless you beyond what you can imagine. It'll help you to never keep records of wrong. So we understand to be merciful. All right. The next thing we have to understand is don't judge. Okay. See, because the Bible says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank that's in your own eye? Woo. You, you hit me that time, Pastor Rob. Yeah, because... I know hurt people hurts people. See, when you are embracing your true identity in Christ, then you get to a place where, you know what? You surrender like, okay, I'm privileged, right? Man, listen, I've been exonerated, okay? Hey, man, listen, the leniency of mercy and grace been upon my life? Well, this is an extension of what? Hey, man, being, being, being a person who reciprocate what you've already been given. Come on, somebody. The other thing we want to set our heads on and understand it in this don't judge but forgive uh, space is don't condemn. I, see, this is that's one of the hardest things to do is not to condemn people. Because we, you know, hey, man, we, when we hurt, we want to bring, we want to bring the wrath of God. Come on, somebody. See, the reason why we shouldn't condemn because we have an accuser. And this accuser is an accuser of the brethren, which says in Revelations 12, 10, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. Listen, how in the world, if you don't want to be identified as an accuser of the brethren, do you? That's Satan's title. So, we can't condemn people. Well, Pastor Rob, you don't understand, man. People just, you know, they, they, they just get on my last nerve. Listen, it's not even for me to understand. The Bible says give, it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. If you decide to forgive, guess what's going to happen? God's going God's to gonna do what he say he's going to do in your life. And lastly, say, listen. Here's a piece you can do when you think it's, it's the hardest thing for you to forgive is, number one, you can acknowledge your pain. You can say, hey, listen, hey, listen, this person hurt me. I'm working through it, but God give me strength. And then, number two, remember God's forgiveness on your life today. Don't forget you are falling short of the glory of God and he's forgiven us. And, and then, listen, the, the build up, let, let the word of God Order our steps and our stops. Brothers and sisters, look, this is the word of the Lord. I know our true identity in Christ is challenging, right? To embrace it. Especially when all of a sudden, you know, you, you got to be talking about forgiveness. You know what I mean? Look, being a Christian is not an easy thing to live out. We accept the privilege and honor that comes with going back to be with the Father. We accept the fact that Jesus interceding for us. We accept the fact that we got a counselor here to guide us. But it also, it hurts because people can be people and we know hurt people hurt people and we're trying to grow in our, our level of our identity of Christ. If you keep embracing it, you're gonna be the person that God called you to be and you're gonna have the things you need to have and you're gonna welcome your identity. Just like this brace on my neck, this is so uncomfortable to where this all day long, right? It's so uncomfortable, but what it's doing on the inside is invaluable, right? That means I'm gonna have to sacrifice. I have to sacrifice and I have to do what I need to do in order to get my complete healing. Man, listen here, you want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant, sacrifice your identity in Christ and overcome and say, listen, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna follow the scriptures. All I'm doing is following the directions of the doctor, y'all. That's right. Follow the direction of the doctor, the king, the king, the Lord, the Lord, the great physician, as you embrace your true identity in Christ.
brothers and sisters, give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and will be poured into your lap, for what the measure you use will be measured back unto you. Heavenly Father, we bless you on this fabulous Friday. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for giving us clarity on understanding this passage here. We thank you, God, that you help us to write the vow. It ain't got nothing to do with tithes and offering. It got everything to do with forgiveness. God, that we may forgive our enemies, our opposers. Oh, God, that we forgive those who have hurt us. God, I pray that we will have our hearts read. just really examine today about this passage and how we should extend forgiveness in a way that is of you, gracious, leaning it. God, I pray as you have just totally embraced who we are and accept who we were. The Bible says, yet while we still sinner, Christ died for us. God, I thank you. That same Jesus who's interceding for us today. God, I pray that we will build up our forgiveness muscles. Oh, God, in our heart, that we will know that you are working out the details. You are the redeemer. You are the deliverer. Reconcile marriages and relationships and friendships and family members. Reconcile siblings together. God, reconcile community together. And let it start with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Mwah! Y'all just been kissed. Come on, somebody. Boy, 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 listen, y'all. When y'all decide and God give you an opportunity to wake up and say, Daddy, thank you for forgiving me today. Thank you for giving me. Tonight, when you go to, before you go to bed, thank him again for forgiving you. And then say, you know what, Father? I recognize you didn't treat me as my sin deserve. Wow. If we think about it like that, We'll be quick to forgive others and we'll look to reconcile with others. Yeah. What about? What about if God didn't reconcile Jesus to us? Remember that. You got the you got all the tools you need. You know why? Because your identity is in Christ Jesus alone. Not in your feelings, but in Christ. Embrace your true identity in Christ. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson on this fabulous Friday. I give God praise for all of you all. Thank you all again for praying for me. Thank you for holding me up. Thank you for supporting us. I love you so much. Hey, God's blessings on you. Have a great day. Take care of yourself.